All right, so what this is, is a, it's called an air track. And what happens is there's a pump over there, all right, um, that you can turn on and it pumps air. And you can see through these little holes here, um, it puts out air, okay? So when I put that track on there, I can push that, but it takes a bit of force. What's stopping me that just keeping going? Yep. Friction. Friction, exactly. All right, so an air track is supposed to reduce friction. So what happens is because it's got all that air, it sits on a little cushion of air, which means it flows. All right, so that's what we use this for so we can work out collisions and stuff like that. Today, we're going to look at not contact and non-contact forces. So I'll ask, answer some questions at the end. So essentially, what we're going to look at, we'll use these for later. They're the exciting ones. We're just going to have a look at this one here. Okay, what's, we talked about Newton's first law, or I think it was referred to in the video. Um, what does that want to keep doing? Moving. Inertia. It wants to... <coughs> Want to, uh... Does it want to keep doing what it's already doing? Yes. Yes, it does. So it wants to maintain its motion. Currently, its motion is nothing. It's, it's staying still, so it wants to stay still. So what do we have to apply in order for it to move? A force. A force. Can you someone turn that on, please? Okay. So you can see it starts to wobble. If I apply a force, it starts to move. Now it keeps moving until such a point as it does something that applies a force. Now it'll keep doing that, air resistance will slow it down, but if I bring it up here and apply a force, it's moving at the same speed the whole time, isn't it? Okay? It's doing what it wants to keep doing. Okay? Unless I apply another force to slow it down or to speed it up. Okay, because I physically touched it then, we refer to that as a, as a contact force. Okay, so the fact that things become in contact with each other, so a physical contact, when we're running we get air resistance, the air particles are touching us, that's a contact force. If we're swimming, you get drag, that's a contact force as well. Alright, we're now going to look at non-contact forces. Check that I've got this the right way. I have. It's just magnets. Right. These are magnets, okay. So can you turn that on again? Okay, so I, I apply a force this way. Have a look what happened. What happened? Yeah, the poles are the same. So we get a force that's changing its direction. All right, is that a contact or a non-contact force? A non-contact force, exactly. Oh. Okay, now we can start to do some things here. Now it's continually changing direction, yet nothing's touching. Alright? Tennis. Okay, it's like that um, pong game or whatever it is. Okay, now I can even put my hand here. All right, because the magnetic force is going through my hand. Okay, if I take it away, there's nothing to oppose the motion, so it continues on until it hits Justin's fingers. Okay, so we talked about there, there's two types of forces. What are they? What's the first one? Positive. Contact, contact, contact. where things come in physical contact with each other. And the other one? Non-contact non forces. So contact forces and non-contact forces. All right, contact forces are things like push or pull. Okay, um, a physical push or pull, air resistance, um, anything that has requires physical contact of two particles. We've got non-contact force when we have um, things like magnet. Gravity is another one, the force that pulls us to ground. So I can jump, gravity will pull me down. That's a non-contact force. Okay, we'll finish up there. Oh.